Okay, we're going to take this opportunity to show you one more time how you can learn to truth one method with another. So as a bit of a review here, I've gone out and started a land desk project, or I'm sorry, a civil 3D project. I've made some points in there like you know how to do, and I've just kind of laid out point one, two, three, and four here. Um, the way I did this, in this case, I put that point four as an offset here. And the general concept will be now, um, it can, they'll have a lot of impl implications as you talk about station and offset, but this general one will be, in fact, what is the angle between vector 4, 2 and 4, 3, if you would, 4, 2 and 4, 3. So we know that we can go ahead, draft these in, do all kinds of things in Land Desk or Civil 3D or AutoCAD, such as dim, angle, grab, between that line and that line and have it give us an angle there of 89.1598 and that's great. It's great to know how to do that. It's important to know how to do it, but it's also very important to know how to do things also mathematically. So we have that 89.1598. Now if you look at here, I'm going to point out something that I occurred to me as I was doing this, the fact that as you try to copy and paste these, they come with that little foot ticker on there. That's a hassle later, um, so changing the format sometimes. If you're going to drop this into Excel, you have to realize you'll need to get rid of those feet symbols. So here, are, here's what I'm going to do. Just realize that we can use the concept of what a dot product or even a cross product is uh, in a very variety of ways to get the angle between two vectors. So I'm going to bring up pull here now. The spreadsheet, sorry. Okay, oh, didn't want to do that. I'm going to grab this and pull in the spreadsheet here and try if I can bring it onto this plane here. Oh, okay, still going to try to do it one more time. Kind of do it this way, I guess. Bring in and go ahead and pull it up. Okay, that's better. So here's what we have in this spreadsheet then. We have a starting and an ending position on our point number 4 to 2, point 4 number to point 2, point 4 number to point 3. We have the starting northings, I mean, eastings and northings, eastings and northing for 4 and point 2 and 3. We then calculate, if you look at here, a delta x, change in x meaning x at the second point minus the x at the first point, change in y being y at the second point minus the y in the first point. This, in fact, here is the vector of line that goes from 4, 2, and this is the vector of the line that goes from 4, 3. Realizing there is no Z, though you could also do it with Zs. It wouldn't make much sense in this application, but that is the true value of being able to use cross products and dot products for calculating angles between vectors. So we have here, obviously, the magnitude, the square root of the squares here and here. And then we have to know the knowledge of how we go about getting the dot product. The dot product is the X's multiplied together plus the y's multiplied together plus the z's multiplied together. So you look at here, we have in fact this right here is these two numbers, the x is multiplied together plus the y's multiplied together. We also then have the magnitudes multiplied together. And we can take that ratio of the dot product, I'm sorry, of the um, the x is, this is actually the value of the dot product. This is the value of the magnitudes multiplied together. And we can go to the point that we can use this ratio knowing that, in fact, the dot product of two vectors is, is the magnitude of one times the magnitude of the other times the cosine of the angle between them. But it is also the x components multiplied together times the y plus the y components multiplied together plus the z components multiplied together. These two ratios, if you then take these two ratios and take an inverse 
cosine. It can only be less. Remember, it can only be less. These are, this is the ratio of the dot product to the full product. In other words, one magnitude by the other. It has to be less than one. You take the inverse cosine of that because you're dealing in dot products and you get an angle of 1.56132. Of course, you convert that to degrees and you get, in effect, the same exact number that you had when you did the calculation in the land desk, civil, 3D, or whatever drafting program you had. So understand that um, this can be much more efficient, especially when this program is buried within your calculator. So as we start putting vectors in, and we will soon learn that in many programs that any linear vector, except in AutoCAD, it is stored by a radial vector to the start of the vector and then a value which is equal to the change in the vector. In other words, if you are beginning a force vector at 100, 100, the first data point is going to be the place that the vector begins and the second pairing or tripling of coordinates is going to be the change in the X, Y, and Z position. So that is a more standard way than the way AutoCAD stores it. But you see here now in this case, and we'll do this with a calculator in class as well, you can see that this calculation, even though this is spreadsheet based, it could be very easily done by hand or in a calculator and would get you an angle between any two vectors. Very, very powerful stuff. And so we'll post this one out. Let me go ahead and pull this thing out of here one more time. You can see within here, there are lots of other basic, you know, basic definitions, and you can use labels and the like um, within Civil 3D. I just want to point out that you've got a series and a, and a cascading set of skills and um, programs that can use to, do, to use basic stuff. The funnest one, I would say, in scalar products is going to be the termination of station and offset, um, or more or less one vector projected on another vector, which once again is most easily done with an AutoCAD or Civil 3D. But when you get into 3D ramifications of this, it's much more easily done using basic vector mathematics. Um, but you've also got to be able to do some addition and subtraction of vectors. So we'll go through that in a separate video. So this is an example here. The problem was determine the angle between uh, line 4, 2 and 4, 3. Uh, you'll see there's a lot of ramifications when you're trying to figure out station offset of a point on a curve for doing this. So um, you've learned how to do this already in a lot of different courses. Um, now is the time to start putting it into uh, building your skill sets and putting these things together. Thanks for listening. We are going to label this one out as determining uh, a, an angle between two lines or two vectors.